Hello and welcome to this Friday edition of Freight Waves Now. I'm your host, Anthony Smith, and coming up, Andrew Cox is going to give us a DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index update. But first, we're going to go to Zach Strickland with the Carry Update, brought to you by PowerFleet. Stay tuned. Hey everyone and welcome to your Carrier Update presented by PowerFleet. I'm Zach Strickland on this Friday. Hopefully everybody has weathered uh, what has been a pretty tumultuous week thus far in terms of, you know, the coronavirus, bill hearings, etc. The freight volumes, of course, have started their decline as we anticipated. Looking at our outbound tender volume index for both van and reefer, uh, we're now seeing reefer, which had a little bit of stickiness there for a minute beyond van, has started to decline as well. So we do appear to have crested the peak fully in terms of outbound volumes. So, uh, and th what this means moving forward is that maybe we're gonna see some sort of stair-stepping impact here where volumes start to decline a little bit. Uh, and then we might have a little bit of recovery out there. Uh, and, and we've already seen that a little bit. So when we first started to see this, this increase in outbound volumes or volumes across the country, um, Everything happened all at once, all across the United States. If you remember some of the maps I pulled up here, all of them were green, or most of them were green, a large majority. Uh, that has not necessarily translated on the downside. A lot of this downside volume is originating from some of our larger markets in the United States. But what is it doing to capacity? Uh, so our van outbound tender rejection index, as well as reefer outbound tender rejection index, both on their way up. Well, no, I should say only van is on its way up. Reefer unlike the van, has responded to the volumes immediately by falling slightly uh, from its peak just a few, uh, just a day ago. So again, van rejection rates continue to be destabilized. Reefer rejection rates uh, actually starting to come down. Now, how long does this last? One day does not a trend make. Uh, so it's still yet to be seen, especially here as we hit produce seasons uh, and all of that stuff starting to move. And again, we definitely expect a little bit more volatility out of the reefer side because they do not have uh, the amount of equipment uh, spread throughout the country as they do uh, in the, on the van side. Looking at the country itself in terms of weighted rejections. So the weighted rejection index, of course, outbound tender market share multiplying by the weekly change in tender rejection rate. Anything in the dark blues here, which is limited uh, at this point uh, to the central parts of the United States, some areas in the, uh, the, the Southeast and of course out here in California. So this is gonna mean these markets are certainly a little bit more volatile uh, going to the upside versus this time last week. Uh, and a lot of the red markets here are gonna be to the downside. Something too important to watch. Looking at the weighted rejection index scale here, 18.48 is now your top number, negative 4.89. So we are starting to shift back towards a little bit more stabilized market overall in the week over week change with the rated rejection index. If we look at some of our markets here, Kansas City, that's that dark blue blob there in the middle of the map being one of the most uh, you know highly volatile increasing rejection rates week over week. We'll hit that here in a minute. Stockton, California, not really a market that you think about uh, having to go into as a carrier uh, as it typically is kind of a black hole uh, if, you, if you enter that market. So this is what I was talking about earlier. The tree map for outbound tender volume weekly change. It's a very mixed bag of volumes coming down and volumes coming up. So Joplin, Missouri, 17.7% up week over week. This is not reflective of the overall United States volumes. You've got what I was talking about with the largest markets in the United States driving a lot of the decreasing volume values and the outbound tender volume index. All the biggest markets right here, Allendown, Ontario, Harrisburg, Atlanta, down 7.6% in the Atlanta market. So that's a big deal, and that's gonna have a huge impact to the, uh, the general national volume level. So that's also gonna have a downward pressure on the rejection rates overall because these larger markets is where carriers are operating right now. So capacity is starting to stabilize a little bit, but here's that Kansas City, Missouri market, 11.8% up, it's still on the rise. Let's look at that. So volumes continue to spike on the Kansas City, Missouri. If you are a carrier here, your contracted volume should be uh, pretty stable at this point by going up uh, quite a bit. You're not, we're not seeing that crest here in this market like we've seen in other parts of the country. Rejection rates as well, all the way up to 31.86% in this market. So extremely volatile. It is not the highest of all time rejection rate, but it is pretty significant at that. So have a good weekend and that'll do it for today's carrier update. 
The comprehensive logistics offerings from Powerfleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with Powerfleet. Welcome to your DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what do you have for us today? Anthony, the carriers are in the strongest position that they've been in uh, since we started this back in September, and I think probably the strongest pricing power position they've been in since uh, the 2018 freight market. Uh, we've got a couple reasons for this. We've seen that uh, you know volumes have, of course, been the story of the last few weeks. They've been just exploding upwards. They've now fallen three days in a row, uh, but you know you can still see that they're at um, at record levels, nearly 20% higher than uh, than they were at, at the peak of last summer. Right, and and as you mentioned, volumes are still very high, still elevated, but. That retraction was something that you were, I think, mentioning and calling last week. Yeah, we're completely expecting this. We we think uh, we did a um, uh, we kind of an estimate on how much freight we thought was completely safe from the lockdown and kind of the recessionary downside risk. And we think about 40% of the truckload freight volumes is completely safe. So here we're talking food, uh, medical supplies, and even some consumer packaged goods. But you got to think about that. Some of that demand for the CPG is has, is going to come down because people overbought uh, in the previous weeks. They bought months worth of toilet paper when they really only needed a couple days. Uh, so the, the demand for some of that's going to come down. So we think that most of the freight that's going to be moving, uh, or that has been moving for you know the, the history of the freight market, is going to be static for the next couple months. Got it. So very much a pull forward for a lot of these consumer goods that's, that's not going to be present later on. No, exactly right, Anthony. And then on the capacity side, capacity still we think uh, tighter than at any point uh, last year. You know we had a very loose capacity for the most much of 2019, where it tightened up towards the end of the year. Uh, it has really tightened up in the last few weeks. You know you've seen. Uh, on tender rejection rates go nearly at 20. Um, and this tells me two things. It tells me, one, that some drivers are actually staying off the road. They're home with their families or they're, they're quarantining themselves. Uh, and then two, this is a measure of contracted rates, uh, of, of rejection of contracted rates. So a lot of these carriers are, are simply rejecting contracted loads to, uh, to, to favor the spot market to test their waters there. I think that's an excellent point, Andrew, that you brought up. We still have some elevated, generally elevated volumes, but it's coming down. But the, the, the capacity is still really tight because, as you mentioned, some drivers are self-quarantining and staying off the road, and that can really keep uh, rejections elevated. Yeah, as long as the outbound tender rejection rates fall uh, slower than the volumes fall, because both are going to fall in the next couple weeks, as long as that dynamic continues, spot rates are still going to stay elevated above contract rates. Uh, I believe that for the next couple weeks, spot rates are still going to be higher, but again, we, we think that uh, I don't know, we only have a couple more weeks of this, of these increased volumes. We're going to see things really fall off a cliff uh, <clears throat> as more businesses, more quarantines happen, everything's shut down. Right, and so speaking of the outlook in the next few weeks, what's the outlook for the upcoming months? So we do, a, we do a, yeah, we do a three-month outlook, and we have it at 40. So we're, we're thinking that it will, it will violently snap back here in a couple weeks. Uh, you know, we've we've grown from just three weeks ago, we were at near 25, and we've had uh, consecutive 15-point jumps and then a 10-point jump. So this is the highest it's been. I think we're going to see it slide back towards the uh, towards the shippers here in the coming weeks, and we look at more of a balanced market at the end of the summer. Got you. And a lot of this comes from the consumer side of things. Another aspect, the industrial side of things, definitely a lot of shuttering on that side as well, right? Yeah. Yes, so uh, we, we didn't really take too much of the flatbed market into account here. We're, we're focusing more on, uh, on truckload and, and uh, I mean, on dry van and reefer uh, in this index uh, particular. But I do think the, the industrial and manufacturing side is going to have a rough go at it for the next couple months. Flatbed is going to be, uh, I mean, almost non-existent for much of the country, especially if, if construction starts winding down, which it might. It, it may fare OK because of the, the outdoor nature and the fact that they can kind of keep some social distancing while they construct things. But uh, there's going to be a slowdown of future projects and things that would have started midsummer. Excellent. Andrew, thank you so much. Appreciate that update. And thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do for this edition of the DHL Supply Chain Pricing Power Index update. Be sure to tune in next week for our latest update. Thank you so much. And that's going to do for this Friday edition of Freight Waves Now. Thank you so much for tuning in. The content doesn't stop here. Our media team is always working around the clock, making sure we're streaming on our Freight Waves TV app. So be sure to check us out on all your favorite streaming platforms, including Apple TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.